All right, welcome back to the TCS Studios. We're going to do this week's edition, a special edition of Tiger Talk. Uh, season's not over as usual for Clemson and Gavin. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just part for the course for us. Uh, back in ACC Championship game, back in Charlotte. Different opponent this year. Yeah. Um, I guess we'll start off a little bit with some of the stuff from yesterday. Uh, I know one of the things you wrote about, one of the guys that had a lot to say yesterday about Clemson and a lack of respect was Kayvon Wallace. Yeah, it was. Uh, he definitely did. He, it was refreshing to hear a guy come up there and, and speak his mind and not say all the coach speak stuff and really just say what he felt and what he feels is that Clemson's the best darn team in the country is what he said. He was very forthright in saying that. Uh, he says uh, he didn't take too kindly to the fact that the Tigers are ranked number three in all the, you know, both the polls and the college football playoff rankings. He, uh, he feels that they're not getting the respect they deserve by the media. And he didn't mention the college football playoff committee directly, but you get the sense that he was talking to them a little bit too. But he, uh, he just he thought it was crazy that uh, he hasn't lost a game since his sophomore year. Uh, and they've won 27 straight games, yet they're still ranked number three in the country. Uh, he, uh, he, he just said, you know, uh, uh, we're the best darn team in the country and y'all are going to see that every Saturday. So stay tuned. So he was, he was very, uh, stay tuned. yeah, stay tuned. And, uh, but you know, he, he mentioned all that and then he, he kind of digressed a little bit and said, you know, at the end of the day, it doesn't matter. We're just going to control what we can control. So he kind of did revert back to the, to the coach speak at the end and saying, you know, all they're focused on is dominating the next opponent, dominating the four quarters against Virginia, and that's what they're focused on. But you could tell the, the rankings really bothered him. Well, that's good. Obviously, we heard Dabble go on a little bit of a rant after the game um, there in Columbia. Uh, another uh, person we had yesterday, obviously some questions for him. is that time of year where some of these questions come out. Coach Elliott was – uh, talking to the media yesterday, and of course, yeah. the media had to ask him about you know interest in other jobs. Yeah, yeah, uh, exactly. You t this time of the year, we're, we're you're going to hear a lot of rumors, a lot of Clemson assistance names being mentioned. You could you just that just comes with the territory, as Elliot said. Uh, mm -hmm. Yahoo Sports Pete Thamel actually named Elliot as one of ten potential candidates for the BC job or to replace Steve Adazio. Coach Reed was also mentioned in that report, and so. Uh, Elliot was asked about that yesterday, asked about being linked to the BC job, and he said, you know what, I'll say what I say every year. Coach Sweeney and the staff and the players, they've treated me too well over the years for me to be distracted this time of year and not give the players the best he can, not give him his best this time of year. So that's what he said. He said, uh, you know what, uh, when, when the time comes, if God uh, opens the door and says, hey, I want you, want you to walk through this door, then then he's going to. But until that time, he's, he's going to be the best he can be where he's at. He's staying in the here and now and in this moment, and uh, he's not going to be distracted by rumors or candidacy for other jobs. He's focused on being the best he can be for the Tigers. And when the time comes, it's, if it's a spirit-led decision, then he'll, he'll follow that. But right now, he's He's, pretty he's pretty much his canned response yeah, that he's yeah, heard much. over and over. Yeah, and yeah. We heard a similar canned response from, from Coach Scott um, when he same questions come up. We are going to hear those names out there for mm -hmm. some of these jobs. Coach Scott's name's been out there for some others. As you mentioned, Coach Reed with the BC job mm -hmm. since he's a, yeah. a BC alum. Uh, so that time of year, today was Dabo's longest press conference of the year. Uh, and it wasn't because he was talking about the win over South Carolina. It was because he was talking about the media the narratives, the lack of respect, um, ask about Feinbaum's comments, had some cool, pretty cool things to say about that. If you've seen her post the last couple of days, Feinbaum had some pretty negative things yesterday and said Dabo needed a pacifier and needed to go to timeout. And Dabo said, I'd love to go timeout. I need a nap. We need, we need, a, we need a timeout for the... For the adults this time of year, make yeah. fun of the nap room a little bit. <laughs> yeah, that was funny. Yeah, he he said he initially didn't even hear the comments because I think they were in a meeting or something like that. Is what he said. Uh, but he said I'm sure it was riveting whatever he said. And then one of the reporters told him what he said, and then he was like, you know, he uh, he took the high road in response mm -hmm. to Paul Feinbaum's comments as you would expect he would. He said, you know what, I like Paul. Paul's great at his job. I'm not ever going to be mad at anybody who's doing a great job, doing as good as his job. Paul's job is he's an SEC guy, so he's gonna spout that narrative and you know he's he he mentioned Eric McClain he said if Eric McClain was on that show you know it'd be it'd be different but he just said basically Paul's good at his job he's not going to be mad at anybody for that uh he said Paul's great at creating drama and stirring up controversy and that's what he did again with he did have a little shot he did say that he won't uh he won't go to 
or listen to criticism for anybody that he yeah. wouldn't go to for advice. Yeah. So that was kind of his way of yeah. saying he doesn't really care what Paul says, yeah. but he did go on and talk yeah. about, you know, he's doing his job and that's what he's there for. Um, but he got probably, I don't know, maybe 10 questions about the same topic, about yeah. the lack of respect, yeah. about the narrative. Um, yeah. And his, you know, one of his big things today was, you know, he's taken up for his teammates, uh, for his team, for the other coaches, and yep. you know, for the guys that he feels like they're not getting the respect they deserve for what they're doing, yeah. and how the, you know, double standard. He talks some about that, and yeah. how, you know, he feels like Clemson's program has earned the right to get more respect from the media and Absolutely. he came right out and said it was the media now he said it yeah. wasn't everybody in the media he said there's people out there that have said nice things about Clemson yeah. he said but the you know the all of that stuff is centered from the coverage in the media yeah so Dabo's worked obviously extremely hard to build Clemson up to where it's at right now and he he takes a lot of pride in that and he he's not going to let as he said anybody diminish what they've accomplished try to diminish what they've accomplished he's going to take up for his guys when he feels like they need to be taken up for he's not just going to sit back and let people stop on their program and say oh they don't play anybody or this is this and that's why they're being successful he wants people to know that hey what we're doing is legit and valid and, and he's not going to let people uh, people criticize his team if he feels like they need to be stood up for he's going to be the guy to do it and for those in the media that have criticized Dabo's comments Saturday, saying, oh, he's whining and he needs to stop saying these things, he made it clear today he's not going to stop. He's going to yeah. take up for his team, yeah. his players, the respect they're not getting, the conference, and everything else. So mm -hmm. I think we're going to yep. probably hear more of that over the next few weeks. Uh, we also had a couple of players today. Uh, one of the guys, one of our favorites that used to write a diary with us, Mike Jones, uh, he came and talked, talked about the fourth down stop he had, said that was, he had gone in there for that one play, and he's like, oh my gosh, it's fourth down, and just did what he did in practice. He's a great young man, talked a lot about Isaiah Thomas and how much he's helped him and how he's kind of been a role model for him and helping him do different things. Um, so he was one of the guys. We also had Jamie uh, Skowski. Dabo talked a little bit about how he was surprised he didn't make yeah. first team or any of the all ACC team, it wasn't even honorable mention, which he couldn't believe. Although Dabo also pointed out this time last year, Isaiah Thomas didn't do any of that, and Isaiah Thomas may be ACC Player of the Year tomorrow. So a yeah. little bit of lack of respect there. As yeah, well. Skowski. Yeah, he, he was he was very uh, he the way he put it. Was, Skowski's a beautiful football player, mm -hmm. is what he said. And he just loves the way that Skowski's gone about his business and been the anchor, sort of an anchor of the defense this line, the, the middle of the defensive line this year, or def, uh, the middle of the defense, I should say. But uh, yeah, Skowski's done a great job. He's uh, the team's leading tackler, and he just doesn't get a whole lot of credit, but he's been he's been rock solid. And Skowski didn't care, you know. He's typical yeah. coach speak answer. He's worried about winning the football game yeah. this week. He's not worried about awards. He's worried about winning championships, and mm -hmm. that's kind of a theme we hear a lot with the. The players there at Clemson. So those are some of the things we heard. I guess the other thing I will add, Dabo obviously did have a lot of nice things to say about uh, Virginia's head coach and about the Cavaliers and you know how he's doing the things the right way and building the program the right way. So a lot of respect there between those two coaches. And we'll hear more of that. Uh, we'll be in uh, Charlotte as usual. We'll have coverage Friday of the coach press conferences, team walkthrough, all that stuff from Charlotte. And then, of course, Saturday we'll be there for the huge game back at Bank of America Stadium. As Dabo said today, it's not going to rain this year. It rained all the time last year. Uh, so it should be a fun weekend. Stay tuned to Clemson Outsider all week long, all weekend long. We'll have the ACC championship covered for you, and then we'll head right into covering the college football playoff.